Thank you for watching this free video tutorial from our course Comprehensive Introduction to Arnold for 3ds Max. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out. In this lesson, we take a look at Arnold's standard hair material, which is a physically based shader to render realistic hair and fur. So in this scene, we have this pillow object with some uh, hair and fur modifier. Now let's press M to go to our material editor. If you right click in the material section, Arnold surface, you have this standard hair material. So let's uh, now in order to actually assign this hair material to your hair and fur, you need to go to the modifier and in the custom shader section, enable apply shader and simply drag and assign this standard hair shader. Okay. Now, as you can see, there are a lot of parameters, but thankfully most of these parameters are simply for artistic controls and to achieve really, really realistic hair looks. The only parameters that you need to adjust is this melanin, melanin redness, melanin randomize, roughness, IR and shift. And the rest of the parameters are simply for artistic controls and not needed to achieve realistic hair looks. So let's run the active shade and see what we are going to get. Now, this is the default render that we have. And as you can see, we get this realistic look, even though it's a bit noisy and we might need to increase our specular samples. But for now, uh, we are going to just leave it like that and take a look at the parameters that we have. Now, the first and the most important parameter here is this melanin value. Uh, melanin is basically is the pigment that gives human skin, hair and eyes their color. Uh, dark skinned people have more melanin in their skin than uh, light skinned people have. And the melanin parameter here is used to basically generate the natural hair color by controlling the amount of melanin in hair. So um, if you use a lower melanin value, let's say like 0.2 here, you're going to have a lighter, more blonde color. Uh, at around 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, you're going to get more brown and red hair colors. And at around 1, you're going to get obviously black hair color. So as you can see at 0.2, we get this uh, blonde hair color. If I set melanin to 0.5, we get this more brown, red hair color. So you can see just by the melanin color, you can uh, achieve different hair looks. You can go and try, you know, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.45 to see the exact colors that the uh, melanin value produces. But you can see how easy it is to achieve really, really realistic uh, human hair in the Arnold 4 3ds Max. Just one value, just a melanin value, and you're good to go. So as you can see at about 0.5, we get this kind of brownish hair color. And if I obviously increase this to, let's say something like uh, 0.9 or one, we're gonna get. So as you can see now we have this black hair color. Okay, for now let's leave the melanin value at 0.5. So we get this kind of brownish uh, hair color. And the next parameter that we have is this melanin redness, which controls the overall redness of the hair. So as you can see at 0.5, this is what we get. And if I increase the melanin redness to one you can see we have increased the overall amount of redness in the hair so in this case this is one and the right render is set to 0.5 as you can see we have this extra redness in the hair so you can do that using the melanin redness value now next we have this melanin randomize which basically randomizes the amount of melanin in the hair fibers which results uh, in a more random hair colors for the hair strands so by default it's set to a zero let me create a copy and now set the uh, melanin randomized to something like one and see what we are going to get so now as you can see we get this randomized look in this right render when the melanin value melanin randomized value was set to zero we would get the exact melanin value in our render but when set to one we get um, different melanin values for our hair strands from 0 to 1 and that gives us this randomized look compared to what we have here. Let me zero out the randomized for now. 
So that's about the melanin values and those are the most important parameters to create and achieve realistic hair looks and I really really love it. I mean if you have used Arnold in previous versions we had tons of parameters, tip color, uh, root color, different specular and transmission controls to achieve that look that you need. But here using only the melanin values you can achieve all types of uh, realistic and physically accurate hairs without any effort on your part. Now we have a few other parameters I want to quickly take a look at in this color section. Obviously we have the weight which is the overall brightness of the hair. Uh, so if I go to something like 0, we get a black shader. And if I go to something like 0.5, we get half of the brightness of our uh, previous render when it was set to 1. And at 1 it is the physically accurate value. And uh, we have this base color, so if you set the melanin value to zero, you can actually control the color of the hair uh, using the uh, any color that you want, right? And in this case, uh, if you actually want to specify a texture uh, for your hair, you need to set the melanin value to zero and uh, basically uh, connect your texture to the color input of the standard hair. I'm gonna just cancel that and set the melanin back to 0.5. Now the next section that we have is the specular section. Uh, and the first parameter here is obviously the roughness, which controls the roughness of her specular reflection and transmission. Uh, lower values obviously will give sharper and uh, brighter uh, specular reflections and are gonna result in a shinier look while higher values obviously gonna give softer highlights and result in a more uh, diffuse and kind of duller look compared to before. So this is the render that we have when the roughness is set to 0.2. Let's set the roughness to something like 0.5 and see what we are gonna get. Okay, so here is our render with the roughness set to 0.5 and if you compare it with the right render in which the roughness was set to 0.2, we obviously are gonna get a bit more diffused look. We are having a rougher specular ref reflections compared to this right render in which we have a sharper specular reflection and that results in a shinier look compared to this duller look on the left render. And uh, the next value here is the IOR value. Let me set the roughness for now to uh, 0.2. IOR value is obviously, we have talked about, this is the index of refraction, basically the overall Fresnel. Uh, and uh, uh, basically, uh, it's really the overall amount of reflectivity, if you uh, want to say, so at a lower value, let's say this is 1.55, right? If I go to a lower IOR value like 1.2, you can see the hair would be kind of less reflective compared to the right render. I don't want to go into technical stuff about how the IOR value specifically works for the hair strands, uh, but as you can see, the result that you see is that lower IOR values will normally uh, result in a less reflective look and higher IR value will result in uh, stronger specular reflections on our hair strand. So if I, so that's 1.2, this is, let's see. So that's 1.2, this is 1.55. And if I increase the IR value to something like two. So this is our render with the IR value set to two. And if I compare it, so there you go. In the first render, the specular, the IR value was set to 1.2, then 1.55, then 2. Obviously, increasing the IR value is going to make the reflections more even, and uh, therefore, we're going to see stronger reflections by increasing our IR value in our hair strands. Right? So let's me close this and set the IR value. Again, stay at 2 for in this case for now. Another important parameter that we have is the shift value, which shifts the primary and secondary specular reflections away from the perfect mirror direction or away from the root of the hair strands. Now for realistic human hair, this value should normally stay below four or you know in something between zero to 10, uh, but normally it should stay below four. So if I set this to something like
let's say 25. So as you can see, by increasing the shift value, we are basically uh, shifting the primary and secondary specular reflections away from the root of the hair strands. Let me set this to three again. Now, the rest of the parameters, first of all, are very self-explanatory, specular one, two, transmission, and these values are normally uh, being adjusted and controlled in real time based on the melanin value that you specify here, and they should stay white to achieve realistic hair look. Uh, we have this diffuse section and it should normally stay at zero again to achieve realistic hair looks But if you are trying to um, Simulate a dirty or damaged hair you need to have some diffuse So in this case if I increase my diffuse weight to something like 0.5 uh, We start to get that Kind of more dirty obviously 0.5 is a bit too much. So let's go to something like 0.2 maybe we start to get that damaged, dirty look if we wanted to. And you need to specify the diffuse color and to the exact color that you want here. So this is what we get with diffuse weight set 2.2, this more kind of damaged, um, dirty look here. Let me start the diffuse weight to zero. Also in the advanced section, we have some parameters. We have this opacity. Uh, you can, uh, once set to white, obviously we get uh, fully opaque hair strands, but if you lower the volume, you're going to get uh, kind of less opaque, more transparent hair strands that can result in a softer look, but uh, setting the opacity value to other than white and in attempt to kind of making the hair look softer is going to increase your render time like crazy. So you should normally stay at white unless you are uh, going for a specific look and we have the indirect diffuse and indirect specular which control uh, how much indirect diffuse and indirect specular rays will affect our hair strand so if I set the indirect diffuse this is set to 1 and this is set to 0 now in this case the indirect specular will affect the hair strands a bit more because we are obviously basing our hair on specular rays so as you can see without the indirect specular rays we get this um, not quite physically accurate look so these values should also stay at one now we have this extra ray depths here and this is uh, adding extra specular ray depth just for this shader and for lighter hair colors it's necessary that we have some extra ray depth value so the ray depth in this scene is set to something like uh, one and we have uh, 16 extra ray depths only uh, extra specular ray depths only for this shader so if i go to let me create a copy here close this active shades so if i set the extra ray depths here to something like one and especially if i use a lighter hair color let's say something like uh, two the effect of the extra depth value would be a bit more apparent you can see at one we get this result and at uh, 16 we add uh, extra specular ray depths for this particular shader so it will look more realistic now in order to clean the look of the hair uh, and make it noise free you need to increase the specular samples because obviously the hair shader is based on speculars and we have no diffuse component by default so you need to increase the specular samples to have a clean render now for the final render let's go to our production rendering mode and uh, I have my camera sample set to 5, diffuse set to 4, specular set to 6. And also let's increase the hair count to something like, I would say 65,000 here, okay, from 20,000. So now I'm going to go ahead and render the scene. So here is our render and as you can see by only adjusting the melanin value and the melanin redness value we got this beautiful a uh, highly realistic hair shader using the Arnold's standard hair shader. So that's about Arnold's standard hair shader. Thank you for watching this free video tutorial from our course Comprehensive Introduction to Arnold for 3ds Max. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out.